Hello, I'm Kevin Fulton. I'm an organic farmer and rancher here in central Nebraska. I practice holistic ranch management where we run uh, numerous enterprises, cattle, sheep, goats, poultry, all on pasture. Where we're standing right now is actually native prairie, virgin prairie. It's never been touched with a plow. You can see wagon trails out here, old sod dugout sites, Indian campsites, and things like that. So what we're trying to do as much as possible is to mimic Mother Nature, animals on the landscape, to be as sustainable as we can. So those animals working in a symbiotic relationship with nature, instead of trying to work against nature, which a lot of our farming practices today are actually, you know, we're working against nature, and we're trying to do just the opposite out here. What sets us apart from a lot of the other farming operations is that we're organic. We're not using any chemicals at all. Our inputs are a lot lower, but at the same time, we can actually produce more. And we don't use chemicals and pharmaceuticals with our livestock, and therefore, our animals uh, don't have some of the problems that you might see with the industrial model. We don't need to use those inputs because we're raising our animals in a natural environment out here, letting them do what they are designed to do. And when you do that, you don't need to use wormers and a lot of the uh, uh, fly repellents and all those kinds of things because we, we have this holistic system where these different species of animals are working in unison and what one species does actually benefits the others. Like the, the poultry, for example, running behind the cattle, break up those fly cycles, and so we don't need to use those kinds of, um, uh, of chemicals to make this work. And we save a lot of money by not using them. And we produce a healthier product as a result of that. It's better for us, it's better for the animals, and it's certainly better for the consumers that are consuming our products. A lot of times, Farmers like myself, organic farmers, natural farmers, we get criticized for not being able to produce or feed the world this way, and I, nothing could be further from the truth. I farmed conventionally for many, many years, and we moved in this direction, and we would never go back. That would be a digression for us. What we found is that we can actually produce more with far fewer inputs farming this way. And just down the hill from me here, uh, several years ago, I raised an organic wheat crop that out yielded my neighbors, two of my neighbors on the other side of the fence there, by double. We produced double the yield of my neighbors. And that wasn't even the best part of the story. We, after we harvested the wheat, because we had not sterilized our ground by saturating with chemicals, we had an incredible flush of, of uh, grasses and forbs that we grazed after that with a large group of cattle. And while those cattle were grazing, we spread out uh, turnip seed, and they stomped it in the ground and planted it for us, and then we grazed that all winter long. That's intensive agriculture. We essentially triple crop that with very few inputs. And the neighbors, meanwhile, harvested their wheat crop and nothing more until the next year. That land just sat idle because nothing could grow there because of the chemicals that they were using. So we are actually doing things more intensively, more efficiently by keeping these animals on the land than what you would see in a, in a factory farm setting. So we're out producing uh, what we could do conventionally and we could produce more protein per acre on this grass than we could if we put these animals in a feedlot or a factory farm somewhere and hauled all that grain to them and then haul that manure back out. So it's a much more efficient system and more productive, fewer inputs. Uh, I don't really know what's not to like about it. Um, and it leaves more money in my pocket because I'm not giving majority of my money to uh, a lot of those big companies like I used to. It's important to be a good steward of the land here, but I like to have an impact beyond just the borders of my farm. So I think it's important for people like myself to reach out and educate consumers and other farmers as well about what we're doing out here and why we're doing it. So yeah, I, I speak uh, and do guest lectures all over the country from uh, New York City to Los Angeles, everywhere in between, a lot of universities, a lot of, uh, uh, well, uh, agricultural events, consumer events, and it's something that I enjoy and it's something uh, that I, I'm very passionate about what I do and, and passionate about sharing my experiences out here with people. Those are your babies, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Those are your babies, huh? Mm -hmm. My dad is a very inspiring person. 
we have to do uh, reports and stuff on people who we look up to and I did a presentation on him on who as my role model so it's just just a great experience having a father like him and people other people it's not just me look up to him and just want to be able to work with him and experience what we're doing and it's just a great thing so these goats will eat a lot of stuff that the cattle won't eat and even the sheep won't eat so um, you know they're in here right now but we, we turn them out to eat weeds and kind of they a little safer in here at night because we don't have the dogs with them. The dogs are out here with our sheep. I think one of my probably most important role is a father out here. And, and too many times I, I hear people talking about sustainability and farming and all these sustainable practices they do and stuff. And that's great. But if you don't have someone that's going to carry that, those practices on after you're gone, you're really not very sustainable at all. Yeah, these. Those two are nanas. This yeah. one's the other one. I always say to my dad that I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be a vet and come back to the farm and I'm going to help run this operation and it's a dream and I'm going to experience all my dreams. Oh, my history is, you know, I, I grew up here on the farm. My dad was a veterinarian. I helped him in his practice. I learned how to treat animals, how to care for animals. Uh, farming goes back to my family as, as many generations as we can trace. So, um, but I farm conventionally and I eventually moved to organic farming. And so we, we've been through a, a transition and um, you know, we keep, it's a work in progress. We keep moving more and more in that direction. I consider myself a pioneer and a leader in the sustainable ag and the humanely raised livestock movement. And that movement is growing every single day and consumers are becoming more aware thanks to social media and, and a lot of other avenues and, and they're more aware where their food comes from and we get the support keeps to build and in contrast the industrial model keeps getting more pressure put against it uh, you know marches against Monsanto uh, videos coming out exposing the atrocities of factory farming and the animal abuse that goes on in those in those operations and it's it's disgraceful and we see more and more of that every day and consumers are uh, finally realizing uh, you know as these things are exposed that you know that's not the kind of meat or f food products that I want to eat I want them to be raised like the way Kevin Fulton or other farmers like me are raising them so you know the beauty of this is we have the numbers on our side the consumer is on our side and that's why we're going to win these battles it's going to take time we didn't get in this position overnight and it's going to take time to make changes but we will these are battles that we are going to win